In this video, we will see how to calculate matrix effects based on the concentration, uh, on, the, on the concentrations. And we are using the same data that in previous video was used to calculate matrix effects based on the analyte signals. So here we have analyte signals that are measured in post-extraction spiked matrix for methiocarb sulfoxide in tomato. And it's done at one concentration level. And we also have a calibration curve in the solvent. Before we can start calculating matrix effects, we need to convert these signals into concentrations. And for that, we will use this obtained calibration curve. Uh, and um, we'll use the Linus function as we have uh, done previously in this course. And we will find first the, here we get the slope, and then we get the standard deviation of the slope and R squared. These two, uh, below lines we are not interested in and we have an intercept here also the intercept standard deviation and also the residual standard deviation however what we see immediately here is that this standard deviation is actually quite big in comparison to the absolute value of the intercept and this is the signal that we actually should omit the intercept in this calibration curve and recalculate the slope. And um, when we omit the intercept, what we get here is that uh, the calibration function is uh, actually in a way that the signal is the slope times the concentration. And now we can use this function to calculate the concentrations in these uh, spiked samples. So the concentration calculated. And because we haven't done any modifications uh, to the units, we will have the same units uh, for this as we had initially in our calibration curve. And since we have only slope, we can simply just um, divide this signal with the slope of our calibration function and we get three concentrations. Uh, however, for matrix calculation, matrix effect calculations, we actually don't need three concentrations and we will actually average these uh, calculated uh, concentrations so that we will get one number and the unit will remain the same so 0 0.04 uh, 94 milligrams per kilogram and now using this formula here we can calculate the matrix F effects uh, you always have to make sure that the units are the same and in case they aren't you definitely have to convert make the conversion um, to calculate the matrix effects uh, in order to before calculating the matrix effect and so what we will do here is with the analyte concentration found we will uh, divide with the concentration that we spiked with and also if we multiply with 100 we will get the percentage and so what we get here is the matrix effect 23.6 percent and based on this number it is a significant suppression we can easily see that and it was also the result for results when the signal, when the matrix effect was calculated based on the signals. However, these numbers are not identical. And one of the reasons, of course, is that right now we use the whole calibration curve with all the 
calibration graph points, while for the signal, um, we only used the signal uh, for the calculation of the matrix effects, we used the signal on the exact same uh, concentration level and omitted all the other points. So we now have a, this averaged uh, calibration curve. So this will have an effect. And in the cases where the concentrations are calculated using the intercept, um, you would also, this would also contribute to this difference. Of course, in this case, um, we don't uh, have this uh, influence here, but still the, the number is different. So that has to be kept in mind that using different uh, calculations for matrix effects, you will obtain um, variations in these uh, numbers.